everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be one of my more savings-y, finance -y related videos. It's going to be a little bit more relaxed and chilled though as it is going to be a Q&A version. So I have in the past done structured videos such as buying my first property, how to save, the house buying process, all about my job, all of them sorts of things. But today I just wanted to let you guys ask me the questions and I'm just going to sit back and answer them and give you some advice. I've got my little blanket here. I'm in my work clothes because I've literally got in from work a couple of hours ago. I've touched my makeup up but this is me on the daily basis for work so I just wanted to do a little video like this for you and I really hope you enjoy it so yeah we're going to be covering a load of different things I'm just having a brief skim read of your questions now there's things in here such as property costs savings tips earnings and mortgages so let's just crack on and get into the video now and I'll just answer your questions basically and hopefully enjoy listening so first off the question is any advice for those earning 25 to 30k who are single I can't get a mortgage alone mortgages are a funny thing and I've been looking into this a lot more recently myself because when I got my place I used the help to buy equity loan which meant I got a 20% deposit from the government it's not as simple as that there's a lot more facts to that but I have done a video on it in the past and I'll probably do another one soon so I'm not going to go into that too much now but what I will say is when I got a mortgage I didn't really understand them that much I was very much learning on the go so I feel like now I'm learning a lot more than I used to know so with mortgages unfortunately there are limits as to what you can borrow which is basically based on affordability or a multiple of your salary so with the help to buy it is actually maxed out at 4.5 times your salary is the maximum they're going to lend you whereas with a bank for example say Santander, Halifax, whoever you're going with they'll look at affordability so it's not just about what you have coming in it's also about what you have have going out you know finances such as your car things like Netflix or things like that don't count but you know things like your car or any loans or credit cards you have do count so unfortunately with mortgages there is a ceiling and you can go online and do calculators which are really really easy to give you an indication as to what you can borrow and the only thing I can say to you if you're earning 25 to 30 and you can't borrow much because them sort of earnings I'm guessing your borrowing is probably about 140 150 maybe I might have that completely wrong but that's just a guess yeah that's not going to get you much of a house unless you're living somewhere really really affordable I know in Essex you can't get anything for that price but that is where the schemes like helped buy come into place there's helped buy equity loan there's also the shared ownership scheme which a couple of my friends are now doing because they can't afford to get a property either too just like when I got my place I needed the help to buy equity loan so there's no shame in doing it just make sure you understand beforehand and if not progress in your career until you're in a position where you are earning more so you can borrow more or keep saving so you can obviously make up the shortfall with that but if you want to get onto that quickly and your income isn't going to massively go up anytime soon then you are going to have to maybe consider other options like that or if you've got a boyfriend are you going to be buying with him is it a case that you can put your two salaries together to borrow more if the time's right unfortunately there is just no magical answer for this because if there was I would honestly be giving it to you right now because I need the answer myself too because I would love to have got a bigger place as my first property not a one bed flat but it was just all I could afford at the time so yeah sorry if that hasn't helped perfectly but I feel like there's not really a like fix to that it's just a case of either find a way of earning more money like climbing the ladder at work can you do exams to progress and then get to the next role to then earn more money can you try and save more money like be a bit more budget friendly save more money can you look into the different help to buy routes just things like that really the next question is are there any hidden costs that you didn't plan for now yes and no I was aware of the cost when buying a property but I wasn't necessarily aware of how much the cost would be so again I've done a video all about this so there's another video on my channel all about the exact cost I incurred I literally told you to the penny what I paid but when I bought my place there was no stamp duty because I was a first time buyer there was ground rent service charge solicitor fees there was also a fee for my mortgage for setting up my mortgage there was a fee and there's also sometimes mortgage broker fees which I didn't incur luckily but a lot of the time they are incurred. The fees can actually be quite high I would always say set aside £5,000 more than you think you need because fees can be quite high I was lucky with mine, I think mine came in at around two and a half grand. but that's because I already had a contribution from a developer to help pay my fees. Without that they could have been a lot higher but yeah I'll link the video down below all about my fees and that will tell you everything you need to know so I would love to know how mortgages work and how to shop about for the best deal so Again, this is something I'm going through at the moment. So I'm currently going through the process of finding out exactly what I can borrow. I know I've obviously had this place only just about a year, but I am actually trying to find out if I could potentially borrow more money. So this is basically what I'm doing right now. So I have found a mortgage broker. The one I found is someone recommended to me locally. So you need to find a mortgage broker locally to you. Go on Google, find someone that you feel comfortable with, maybe message a couple of companies, but most of them hopefully will be okay. Don't count me on that. I'm not promising anything, but hopefully they should be okay. And a mortgage broker has access to the whole of the marketplace. So they'll take your details, put them into their system, and they'll find out what you can borrow, with who, and what rates are available. So this is basically the best way to get the most competitive rate 
you can do the research all online yourself but quite frankly it's going to take a really long time and i just find it to be a lot easier with a mortgage broker there will be fees incurred when using a mortgage broker most of the time unless you're using a new build development because they often pay for it for you or there is a nil fee for doing that because they refer you to someone but if you are finding someone yourself obviously they need a fee because it's their job and the fee will be paid at either completion on the property or at outset when you instruct them depending on who you go with so that's just down to the person you select but there is a fee but honestly it will save you so much time it is honestly worth it so when they have found a mortgage that looks great for you they'll then collect even more data from you and then apply for the mortgage so the data that they collect are things like it's really lengthy by the way so they need three months bank statements they need passport driving license like proof of id proof of address they also need um, three month pay slips, loads of details such as your address, where you used to live, your NI number, your earnings, any dividends you get if you're self-employed, your basic salary, any director's bonus if you're self-employed or have a limited company. They need company accounts if you've got your own company, um, which is another ball game. It's very difficult to borrow if you're self-employed. Well, not difficult, but it's harder. They need things like commission, any loans you have to the penny. They need all the details, all the lenders, your previous mortgage statement. If you've already got mortgage, there's so much data they need. Honestly, they'll, they'll send an email to you with all the information they need. And I looked at it and I was like, really? Like I need to send you all of this to find out what I can borrow. Really? Like it's, it's a lot of information, but it's worth it to get the best rate and to get your mortgage offer called a decision in principle. How did you stay positive when saving for your own property? Well, I've stayed positive by regularly looking online at properties so I can keep myself focused, keep myself kind of knowing that that was what I was gonna get eventually. And it was just a case of thinking to myself, the harder you save, the quicker it's gonna happen. It was kind of that. And every single month, I would just get more and more excited. I'd set myself a goal. So my first goal was like, right, I need to hit 5K. So I wasn't trying to set the goal too high. I knew in my head I wanted to hit around 20 eventually, but I wasn't focus on the 20 figure at the first initial hurdle it was like let's get to five let's get to 10 let's get to 15 let's get to 20 so i broke it down into steps which made it a lot easier as well again i've done a whole video all about saving that 20 grand and what i did what is the process of buying a new bill did you reserve a plot so the process is very different depending on when you reserve your property so you can either go off plan which is what i did or you can buy a plot which is being built or you can buy a plot which is completely finished or even furnished in some cases so with my property i went off plan so i was literally the first person to complete I say the first person, me and my block of apartments were the first to complete. As soon as this development was launched in my area, I went online, I found it, I just literally searched new builds in and then where I live. And that's how I came across the property because that was another question, how did I find the development? That was literally it. I googled new builds in and then the area. So it came up, it had the details of who to contact, contacted them, went in for a meeting, and within a couple of days, I had literally reserved the property. And then within a couple of weeks, I'd exchanged. And then it was basically waiting game until it was built. So reserving my property was relatively easy. So you go in, speak to them. They show you the plans. So she showed me what the development was meant to look like, the floor plans of my property. There was then a checklist that I had to go through, basically a tick list to make sure she told me everything and showed me everything before I was able to reserve the property. Then I had to put a reservation fee down, which I think was 500 pounds, but I can't remember, but I think it was 500 pounds. And that reserves the property and makes it yours. And then at that point, they then recommended me the mortgage broker. They recommended me a solicitor. And I went through them to people because it was just a lot easier to do it all with the people they'd recommended because they already had kind of connections and they knew each other and all of that. So it was easy for me to get in contact because they basically contacted me actually. So I had the mortgage broker contact me and say, right, can I come round and do the mortgage application, that sort of thing. I had the solicitor email me all the details, post them on the documents, that sort of thing. And then, yeah, it was a space of about four months from that point to getting the keys, I believe. And during that period of time, there's a few forms to complete, such as my mortgage application, a few solicitor documents to complete. And then obviously transferring the money as well, which happened right at the end. So I didn't actually give them my deposit until around two weeks before I moved in, I think. And I also had to give them all the fees as well at that point too. So I had to send the entire sum at that same stage, I think anyway. It was something like that. But yeah, once I reserved the plot, I still had them four months to keep saving because I still wanted to save a little bit more at that time. So yeah, that's what happened for me. Hopefully that helps. I feel like I'm being very rambly. I don't know if I'm helping guys. I'm very tired. When buying a new build, did you choose finishing touches to the inside? Was it extra money? So with my new build, I purchased mine through Red Row developers. And I have to say, I feel like Red Row are quite a luxury developer. Some people are probably gonna literally laugh at that comment and send hate and that's fine because everyone has an opinion on developers. But personally for me, for the developers I have seen, which are a lot, I 
actually think Red Row are definitely up there because recently I have been looking at a lot of new build sites and I've looked at Charles Church, Persimmon, Taylor Wimpy, can't remember who else, Bellway, oh David Wilson Homes, oh god David Wilson Homes are amazing, <laughs> so Charles Church actually but yeah I'd say D David Wilson Homes, Charles Church and Red Row are definitely my favourite new build developers, I just feel like the quality is really, really good. So there really wasn't much that I wanted to upgrade at all. The only thing I upgraded was in my bedroom. I went for mirror wardrobes. I think it was about 95 pounds. I didn't find that to be too expensive at all. There are things like extra plug sockets, which are through the roof expensive and honestly don't get them. When you look at the floor plans, you'll think, oh my God, I don't have enough plugs. That's not true. When you go into your house, you'll realize you have more plugs than you could ever need. That's what I found anyway. I was really worried I wouldn't have enough, but I literally don't even use half the plugs in my house. So no, don't worry about that. How much did you save aside the deposit? For example, for furniture or home essentials. I believe all of my furniture came to around two or 3,000. It wasn't too crazy at all. Now my sofa was about 1,001, 1,200, but I did get that on finance. I paid for that monthly. And my bed was about 500 pounds but everything else was really really budget friendly affordable obviously my tv was expensive too at 500 pounds but everything really didn't cost me too much at all my most expensive pieces i got besides them was my dining table which was 150 my dining chairs which were 80 pounds each my bedside tables which were 80 pounds each and my mom dressing table which was 80 pounds other than that everything i picked out was literally 10 20 30 pounds so yeah i, I definitely think it was probably about two two thousand i want to say without the sofa maybe even including the bed it really wasn't too much at all but i would say set aside two to three thousand basically like i did as well and that will definitely be enough won't be enough of your sofa unless you're getting a cheap sofa maybe using say facebook sales or something like that or ebay but it will definitely be enough to get you everything else and i mean everything i have completely decked my place out as you guys know from my home tours you know i don't i don't mess around i've got a lot of stuff i'm on maternity and my husband works full time will we be able to get a mortgage this is a really interesting one and the answer to that is it depends now if you're on maternity leave unfortunately most lenders will not count your income for borrowing purposes now there may be the odd exception but I don't know of any, and you'll definitely have to speak to a mortgage broker and see if they can find someone who will still count your income. As far as I'm aware, your income is not counted, so that's really difficult. The only time they can sometimes count it is if you have proof of when you're returning to work and what your salary will be. So what you may be able to do is get a letter from your employer stating when you're returning to work and what your salary is gonna be when you return, and they can use that when applying for your mortgage, and that can sometimes help. So that is something to consider and look into. However, the only option you really have at the moment without that is to base it on your husband's earnings and what he can borrow and that is literally it so what i'd say is see a mortgage broker and get them to do all the research for you because they're specialists they know what they're doing it's their job they know all the tricks of the trade all the secrets and i'd say definitely see someone and get them to do the research for you and see the world well, drop my phone and see the maximum borrowing they can get for you how to continue to save or budget whilst paying your mortgage and bills well that depends on what your earnings are and what your outgoings are. So it really depends if you do have monthly leftover income or not. If you are struggling each month and finding that you really don't have anything left, I would strongly suggest reviewing your outgoings. So go through your bank statement, look at all your direct debits. Is there anything on there that you can reduce? Do you have a car finance, which is due for renewal soon, which you can downsize to a smaller car? Downsize, I make it sound like a house, but you know what I mean, downsize to a cheaper deal. Do you have a phone contract which is ending soon which you can get a SIM only contract for? Is there anything that you don't need to pay for which you're paying for which could save you some money? Do you have Netflix and Amazon Prime for example? Is it Amazon Prime? I think it's called Amazon Prime. You know, can you cancel one of them? Things like that. So that's more so your committed expenditure. Obviously Netflix isn't included but things like cars and all of that, they're committed and you can't just get out of them. Then review your non-committed expenditure which netflix would fall into that category things like food fall into that category are you buying too much each week are you buying things that you don't need to buy are you buying branded names when you could just be buying audi products you know that sort of thing just make little cuts on everything and eventually you will see that does start to accumulate up now another way to obviously get higher income is things like you could get a second job although most people aren't going to want to do that if you already work full time but my main 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 piece of advice which i always give to people is can you progress in your current job are you doing enough and I don't mean that in a way of, are you lazy or anything like that. I just mean, do you know in your heart that you can be doing more at work? You know, are you sitting there each day and thinking, actually, you know what? I'm finding my job quite easy. If that's you, please go and speak to your manager and say, is there anything else I can be doing at work? Obviously, don't phrase it quite like that. You need to ask them, you really want to progress. You feel really comfortable in your role now and you would love to learn the next steps. 
and then obviously speak about a role which you find interesting and ask them how you can achieve it and it might not be an overnight thing it might take six months it might take a year but if you show enthusiasm and interest you are giving all the chance of getting a different role eventually you're giving yourself the best chance of being put on a kind of roadmap to that role when there's a vacancy available and then your income's obviously going to increase if you're taking on more responsibilities so that's something to really consider if that is just a no-go in your current job then honestly get online and see what else is out there know your worth even if you're happy in your job you like your colleagues if you're not being paid the market rate and you know you can be paid a lot more for what you're doing or there's another role out there which is a little harder but something you know you can do honestly just go for it you're not going to regress it you know everything you do in life is just an experience a new lesson a new chapter if you go to another place and don't like it you can move on again it's fine but i definitely think don't just settle at work always push for the stars <laughs> as cringe as that sounds so how did you get a mortgage so how i got a mortgage i feel like i keep mentioning mortgage brokers but basically yes i went through a mortgage broker gave them all the details i mentioned earlier in the video and then they applied for the mortgage for me and it was literally that simple they applied for the mortgage i got accepted I signed all the paperwork and was given the mortgage. So yeah, that is literally how I got the mortgage. Can you use help to buy on properties that aren't new builds? Now, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think you can. You can definitely go online and type in, you know, help to buy equity loan and find out all the criteria because criteria is constantly changing. But to the best of my knowledge, currently they are only available on new builds and only on developments that allow that. So you definitely have to go online, find a development in your area you like, and then ask them, do you offer help to buy? They'll often say on their website if they do offer help to buy. Another really good website is called Smart New Homes, and they also have all the new builds in the area. So you can literally search your area. It will pull through all the houses in your area. Really good website to use, actually. And that will often say if there's help to buy available too. How much money do you think is enough to leave yourself after all bills and savings now i feel like this question is very hard to answer because it's definitely down to the individual and what you feel comfortable with so some people are happy to spend every penny each month and not have anything left some like me i'm very cautious i would be quite worried if i didn't have any money in the bank each month just because you never know what's around the corner you don't know what's going to happen you might need some time off work for whatever reason and for me i definitely need a bit left over each month and i also like to set money aside each month so it's just what you feel comfortable with so yeah you just have to figure out one what sort of money do you want left over a month for you just for your own enjoyment like going out for dinner that sort of thing and then secondly how much money do you want to save each month and then see what that figure is and try and figure out if it's realistic or not and the second thing i want to add is something like income protection can be really good now kind of random but for me i definitely wouldn't be able to set enough money aside now after i have my mortgage to you know pay my bills like indefinitely if i wasn't working for whatever reason so obviously who could so income protection is a great thing to get because you get income protection you pay a monthly premium each month and if you're unable to work for whatever reason it pays you an income until the age you've set so for example for me my income protection will pay me until the age of 65 which takes me way past my mortgage end date so that means my complete mortgage will be paid off if i was unable to work for a reason that was justifiable to the insurance company to pay me for that long obviously that would have to be a very extreme case but at least i know if something happened and i can't work for whatever reason i have got a nice income source from now until 65 and there's so many options you can have with income protection so you can pick what income you want you can pick loads of different options at the beginning so how long do you want to wait for it to start say one month three months six months whatever you want to do that will all affect the premium you pay each month oh my god there's so many videos I want to do about finance products like income protection which i hopefully will do in the future but hopefully that gives you a really brief overview that income protection is a policy which pays you an income if you're unable to work but when i say unable to work there are exclusions in the policy so some policies won't pay out if something certain things happen so you have to be very careful personally i would recommend you speak to a financial advisor if you are considering one of them because you want to make sure you understand it properly you know what guys i think i'm actually going to end the vlog here because i'm really tired like i'm actually really tired it's now eight o'clock so i think i want to just put my phone down i haven't answered all the questions i have quite a few more here so i probably will do a follow-up video on this another time but i hope you enjoyed i hope i hope it did make sense i feel like when i'm filming this because i'm so tired my head is all over the place and i feel a bit rambly and not making sense but hopefully when i edit it back it won't be too bad so anyway hope you enjoyed hopefully it gave you a little insight into some financing things and i'll see you in my next video bye bye Mwah. Thank you.